One of the earliest signs that a TV show or movie is going to be trash is when they come out and attack the fans. You don't need to do that if you have confidence in your product, because you'll just put it out and people will like it because it's good. Whereas if you know you've done something awful, that's when you need to start spinning the narrative, that's when you need to get out ahead of it, and that is what George R. R. Martin has come out and said today. I don't understand how people can come to hate so much something that they once loved. I don't know, George, it's not rocket science, it used to be good, and now it's not. It's almost like people will judge something off quality. But marketing has never been about quality, marketing is what you can convince something of. There's a lot of people out there who just want to go with the crowd. And so if loads of people are saying it's good, they'll say it's good as well. And even if they think it's not, they don't want to step out from the herd and say it. This is why they try and insult people, to shame people, to label them badly. Because that way, less people are going to be honest. The thing is, the more IPs get destroyed, the less patience people have, and so the more people are speaking out. This is why companies now are just point blank coming out and attacking people before they've even launched the show. Lucasfilm just warned Moses Ingram she's going to get attacked because she can go on a beach without suntan lotion. I mean, honestly, I don't think that's the problem. It could be the fact that they knew they'd written a character who was completely insufferable, put on a pedestal, and will actually become the main point of the show when it's meant to be about Obi-Wan. But rather than that being the story that gets out into the press, they wanted to get ahead of it and set the little talking points for everyone to go out and repeat. They wanted articles like this to be written where it talks about the grim reality where warnings had to be made. It's refreshing to see a studio support such vulnerable actors in this regard, even if they aren't taking action against the people doing the act harassing. Yes, that's right, apparently it's now harassment to go that Obi-Wan is actually a terrible show, and it's got characters in it which are just terribly written. I also want to say though, Game Rant is complete filth, because in this same article, they go, sexism is also a problem on its own, it even affected the protagonist of the Jedi The Fallen Order. I'm like, what? That was weird. It was originally intended to be a type B. So I went through to their own linked article to find out what on earth this ism could possibly be, and what was so bad about it, and it turns out that the studio actually said that they decided on it to be a man because at the time Ray was leading the movies, and so they wanted to balance it out? Yes, that's right, Game Rant has now said that the equality that apparently everyone thinks is so amazing nowadays is actually an ism. So what Game Rant is actually saying is there should have been two type Bs, because that's the only way that something wouldn't have been an ism, apparently. I mean, to me, the only thing their article proves is that uh, Game Rant are actually the bigots in this scenario, but hey, who could have guessed? But for me, this is a major warning sign for House of the Dragon, when you've got George R. R. Martin himself coming out and just starting attacking his own fans. And the thing is, if you're an author and trying to spin a narrative, I at least expect it to be good. But this has to be one of the most basic low IQ takes on this I've seen which I can understand why he can't finish his book, because it seems like all of his creative talents left him many years ago at this point. Because George's take is literally the meme. I don't understand how people can come to hate something they once loved. If you don't like a show, don't watch it. How has everything become so toxic? Yes, critiquing something is now toxic. Nothing's ever about self-responsibility anymore. That if you produce something and it's awful, that's your fault! That's not the people who are calling it awful! They're just being honest! It's your lack of talent that was the problem. It's not the fans that ruined the Game of Thrones TV show. That was the writers. It's not the fans' duty to compliment what you do. It's your job to create something which is worthy of compliment. And that horrible feeling you'll blame the fans for, uh, that's your own knowledge and acceptance that they're actually correct. Because he goes on and says it used to be that if you were a fan of Star Trek, you like Star Trek. Yeah, that's that's when it was actually good. That's what that was. They didn't like brand because it had brand stamped on it. They liked brand because brand made good stuff. If brand stops making good stuff, people don't like brand anymore. If I like a coffee shop because they make good coffee, and then two years down the line, every time I go in there, the server punches me in the face, I'm going to stop liking the coffee shop. Brand being the same doesn't improve it. But now it seems like half the people, only half, that's surprising, who call themselves Star Trek fans hate Star Trek. No, they don't hate Star Trek. They hate Star Trek Discovery. They hate new Star Trek. Because it's not Star Trek. 
Half of the issue with this kind of stuff is that brand is no longer the same thing it used to be. Why? Because they think that the stupid sheep will just like whatever brand is stamped on. And George R. R. Martin can't understand why the sheep don't seem to be doing what he's telling them. And the Star Wars fan hates Star Wars. Could be because Disney has done nothing but pump out crap. And the Tolkien fans hate Rings of Power. Yeah, he spoke about Rings of Power before. Lords of the Rings, Rings of Power isn't even out yet. Hey, no, George, that's a little unfair. You can't just wait until it's out. I mean, most gut shows don't actually get good until season three. So you've actually got to wait for all of season three to go before you can even start to judge a show. That's just how all things are done. But if you follow what's going on online, the controversy is like World War II. They're dropping atomic bombs on each other. Which is because all signs point to it not being Lord of the Rings. And because all of their marketing seems to be disingenuous and simply trying to push a narrative rather than just being honest and going, this is what we're making. What do you think? It's pieces like this which do anything but just try and sell something on its merits which are the problem. Because you either try and insult the fans to make them shut up or you try and sell it as something else. Marketing material that does anything but preach about the quality. Instead, it goes on the attack. It acts that everyone else is at fault, rather than the people that made the show. It's weird that you're coming out with a defensive posture already, just like Obi-Wan. It's almost like that everyone realizes what they've done and knows that people are justified to not like it. And that's the problem that you have an issue defending. And it lets the cat out of the bag with his next sentence as to why people aren't going to like it. What the hell? Maybe it's because it's changing. Yes, when they took Halo and made it not Halo, it's simply because Halo was changing. Halo isn't what it used to be. Halo isn't for you anymore. It's for this new audience, which doesn't really exist. Rings of Power isn't Lord of the Rings anymore. No, it's for this new audience, which doesn't exist. And while other people may have different reasons for it, whether it's because of some social reason, they think people need educating in the correct way of living so that they can advance civilization into a new golden age, George actually has a different reason. And honestly, it's what I fully believe. As a writer, you'd go crazy if you didn't change it. You want to tell new stories, not the same stories over and over again. In other words, he's going to make something he knows no one will like. It's not going to be Game of Thrones. And the reason he's going to change everything, even though he knows people aren't going to like it, is because he's selfish. Because he wants to tell new stories, not the same stories over and over again. Now, obviously, uh, you can tell different stories in the same universe, and they will be new, and they will entertain the writer and the fans. But that's not what we're talking about in this context. When you're talking about Star Wars, it's because it's no longer Star Wars. Star Trek, Discovery, and Picard aren't Star Trek. When he's on about new stories, he actually means new IPs. It's just a new brand with old brands stamped on it so that they think the fans will like it anyway. And they can't understand why the sheep are revolting. When it comes to George, new stories with the same characters in the same universe aren't new stories. They're old stories. That's why he can't finish the book series, because he sees any stories being told in that universe as just old stories over and over again. No, he's got to tell new stories in new IPs, new games, new TV series. It's all about him, his entertainment. He doesn't care about his customer base at all. He doesn't care that he's not finishing the series and the customers may actually deserve that, that he owes it to them. That means nothing to him. When someone has an opinion of their fan base so low, that's why he thinks, what the hell? Why don't you like this stuff? Why on earth wouldn't you like what the aristocracy has created for you? You're just cheap. You should consume. He's made this. He's amazing. Why doesn't anybody like it? It's not a particular surprise in such a self-absorbed society that writers will just write for them and what they want rather than what the customers want. It's because the customers don't matter to them. Oh, we'll come up with some marketing plan to convince those people. Ah, uh, they'll have the opinion we give them. And if they don't, well, we'll just shame them into shutting up anyway. And criticism, who could criticize George R.R. R. Martin, the wonderful genius? which has been birthed onto our world. Yes, no one possibly could. Because although he didn't like Marvel TV series, he didn't go crazy and start writing hate mail. Yes, any criticism now is hate mail, apparently. Saying Kenobi is awful, because it is, is hate mail. It can't be justified or legitimate or true. No, it's obviously just random haters and probably gets filed in the same place as all the letters I'm sure he gets telling him to finish the book series, you know in the bin. But George, in his super high IQ take, thinks that all of this has only started uh, because of social media. Yes, social media has started 
people criticizing things. Nobody ever used to criticize a movie or a book or anything else in the past. No, everyone just randomly liked it all. And if they didn't like it, they just shut up. I, I don't think they did. I think they just spoke in, you know, their friendship groups, so you didn't personally hear about it. And now online, everyone hears about everything. But they still thought it, and they still said it, and they still thought bad writing was bad. I don't know, George, maybe if you're getting more negativity now than you used to be, it might not be down to social media. It might be because you're treating your fans like crap. It might be because you haven't bothered to finish your book series, which you owe them. You have a duty to finish a book series when you create it. Robert Jordan was on his deathbed trying to finish his. He went above and beyond because he thought people deserved it. But George, George doesn't care. I mean, as a writer, he'd go crazy if he didn't write something new. It is an interesting philosophical question though for George, isn't it? Can you actually be a writer if you don't write? I mean, I can fully understand if as a writer, you prefer to write across many different IPs rather than one long epic fantasy series. But if you don't want to write an epic fantasy series, maybe don't start one. But you can understand why he doesn't care about the fans, you know, the little people, the sheep, and their opinions of things, when you find out what he actually values, you know. Because talking about Rings of Power and House of Dragon, he says, if they win six Emmys, and I hope they do, I hope we win seven. But nonetheless, it's good for fantasy. I love fantasy and I love science fiction. I want more shows on television. More shows. That's what we want. More shows. Yes. More adaptations. More money for writers. It doesn't have to be any good. It doesn't have to be anything like the brand. Just more brands on television is what we want. And Emmys. We all want Emmys. Awards. We want the red carpet. We want the ceremonies. We want the free booze and the goodie bags. That's what's important. The opinion of Dave down the road who's just watched his favorite fantasy series be destroyed. <laughs> no one cares about him. Not when I've got an Emmy. If only we could go back to those good old days where if you just like Star Trek, you just apparently like Star Trek. Yeah, you didn't possibly dislike any of it because you liked brand. We need to go back to the simpler time when people were thick and stupid and didn't actually tell us what they thought. I don't want any of those dirty peasant opinions. They can go over there somewhere. If you don't have an Emmy for me, I don't want to know. So for me, I think this is a major red flag that House of Dragon isn't going to be what people expect, which, you know, at least it is an IP where the author is still alive, so whatever disaster it turns into, he is entirely responsible for it. This isn't like they're getting a deceased author and destroying his life's work, so in this case it's at least refreshing that George R. R. Martin is entirely responsible for the destruction of his own legacy. And the entire statement as it is, which basically shames fans that actually, if you don't like what they've done to Star Trek now, you're just not a real Star Trek fan. Yeah, Star Trek fans used to like Star Trek, but if you don't like the new Star Trek, clearly you're not a Star Trek fan. <laughs> they've destroyed the Borg, which alongside the replicators for Stargate SG-1, two of my favorite, and Nemesis, yeah. It really makes a great Nemesis that now they'll go around and assimilate the galaxy for love and friendship. <laughs> but it is at least refreshing in the fact that George's entire argument comes from the position that he's amazing and he's just completely self-absorbed and self-obsessed. He, he comes out and just goes, I don't care what the fans think, all of you could sod off over there. I preferred it before the internet when I didn't know any of your opinions because quite frankly, I only want my own. I'm gonna do what I want and if anyone disagrees with me, I just don't care because I don't consider you a fan. <laughs> At least there you know where you stand with him. He's like, I'm the aristocracy, you're a peasant, go away over there, you smell. I think I'd much prefer a guy just come out and just go, I I don't care about your opinion than places like Lucasfilm where they just come out and start insulting everybody else. I mean, is it any surprise when the acting is so unbelievable when they're put into a strong leadership position? It's just because their entire life has been spent practicing being the victim. I was paid tens of thousands of dollars to do this role, but at the end of the day, I'm the victim. I've got to go through this and suffer and you have no idea how hard it is for me. At the end of the day, I'd much rather laugh at the idea that George R. R. Martin thinks he's superior to anybody when he can't even finish his own book series than have to put up with yet another person who doesn't understand that American cultural politics simply doesn't export to the rest of the world and no other nation on earth has the same hang-ups you do. So quite frankly, your insults don't work, love. When the rest of the world focuses on culture and beliefs, it does come across as absolutely ridiculous when the only thing you want to talk about is people's varying biological chemistry. But at the end of the day, it's all just another sign that before the show's even released, you know exactly what it's going to be because the showrunners do. They know the fans aren't going to like it, which is why they come out and attack the fans. And George 
is doing exactly the same thing. The reason he's coming out and saying that the fans won't like it is because he knows what they've made and he knows that they're not gonna like it. So when people are like, how can you judge something when it's not even out? The real answer in this case is I don't need to judge it because George has already done it for me. But what do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe. More videos like this in the future and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.